So a couple of weeks ago, we did a Frisbee aerodynamics and that was really cool. It was one of those discs. So check that video out. There was some really cool physics going on there. This is a flying gyroscope. So it's a similar sort of idea to a Frisbee, but not, it, it works very differently actually, but a similar sort of toy idea. And what this is, is this ring. So this is the leading edge here, the front. And then you have the back, this like serrated pattern. And what you're supposed to do is you grab it and you throw it and the spin that you impart on it um, creates this gyroscopic stability. So then it makes this disc very stable in the air and it can actually travel really long distances because it doesn't really want to tumble. Whereas, you know, like when you have a frisbee and you throw it, it wants to like, you know, curve off to the side and that. So with these, they don't really produce much lift. It's just that with that gyroscopic stability, they can travel uh, much in a much straighter direction and not um, fall to the side or tumble. So this is a picture showing the U magnitude streamlines going through it. This shows you two things. First, that there's not really any skewing of the streamlines. So that means there's not really any lift being produced to the velocity distribution. So you can see over that lip there, there is this uh, acceleration, but that happens on both the top and the bottom and on both sides. So there's not really uh, much happening here to the flow. It's mainly just cutting through the flow. But interestingly, having said that, this disc is actually still very um, draggy. Its drag coefficient is like above 0 0.5. And the reason why is because it has such a small frontal area. So it has a very small frontal area. It, produce, it um, disturbs the flow a little bit. You can see this wake behind. So that's why you get a high drag coefficient. And this picture shows the UZ, so the up and down velocity in this picture. And the reason I wanted to see this is because it gives you a good idea as to what the flow behind is doing. So again, you can see that the wake isn't really moving up or down very much. And what's wise you'd expect the flow over that lip versus go up and then down. So it's a fairly streamlined um, object, except for this lip here. And also um, the fact that it has a fairly low frontal area and a fairly high wake afterwards, maybe these serrations help a little bit. This video shows you the pressure um, in the flow in a plane going through this uh, gyroscope, and it ranges from minus 50 to 50 pascals. And as we go through, you can see that there is high pressure ahead, which is what's really creating that drag in it. So you can see that it's probably mostly pressure drag that um, this object is producing. Then as you go over that lip, as you'd expect, there is a low pressure, but that's because the flow is accelerating, and then it decelerates a little bit, so you get this high pressure. And at the back, the trailing edge, you get this low pressure followed by this slight high pressure region. So it's really that, that high pressure at the front that really you know, makes the drag bad. Not the exact same plane, but the U magnitude. So this will give you an idea of the extent of the wake going through this uh, flying gyroscope. So again, as you go over that lip, you get that acceleration, but then this wake is, is pretty big and I'm pretty sure it's because of that lip. It just um, is not very aerodynamic. All right, so make sure to check out the International Aerodynamics Conference. It happens in October. It's there for everyone who loves aerodynamics and you can come along if you don't love aerodynamics, but you just need to pretend. Link in the description. Check out the Atmosphere Hawk. It makes everything better in your aerodynamics. You know, you're going to be loving life. So check it out and link in the description and peace out. Pew.